Hello there. I can't believe I am saying this, but we are already up to the penultimate episode of season one of Breaking Bad on my first time watching Journey, ladies and gentlemen. It is your boy, Ellie Moses, your 23-year-old law and film student here from Sydney, Australia, shooting his shot. And we are up to episode six of Breaking Bad season one, titled Crazy Handful of Nothing. Now, at the end of the last episode, Walter returned to Jesse to propose. Do you want to cook? And I feel like this episode is going to cook. <laughs> so yeah, let's waste no more time. Let's see what this episode has in store for us. Let's see what ingredients are going to be in this one. Let's smash this reaction. Let's have some fun. Let's go. Let's get something straight. This, the chemistry, is my realm. I am in charge of the cooking. <laughs> Out there on the street, you deal with that. No matter what happens... No more bloodshed. <laughs> About no violence. <laughs> Is this going to be a similar situation to episode one where it begins with the ending of the episode or sort of like this one is interchanging cuts between the ending of the episode um because it seems like this is the effects of walter's treatment um with the chemotherapy but it seems like a little bit of foreshadowing as well no more bloodshed no more violence and it's going to be a consequence of the already established um regime at the beginning you know the cooking is my realm jesse you deal with our clients but i don't ever want to see him and at the that I start to see red flags already with that because I don't feel like Jesse is the best at interacting with people. And what if his already pre-existing client base has connections upon connections that eventually it's going to lead to a meeting with Walter or both of them? Um, because, yeah, I don't see Walter being out of the picture because if the stuff is as good as he is, like if the stuff he continues to produce continues to be at that high quality grade level... They're gonna want to meet the cook. They're gonna they're gonna want to meet the artist. <laughs> so, oh man, I love this show. Now, what the f happened to get that ending? I guess we'll find out. Chemical reactions involve change on two levels: matter and energy. I don't know why. The reaction I just, is I just, gradual. The change in energy. Is I don't know why. There's something great. Um, it's so simple using time lapse shots and scenic time lapse shots. Uh, time lapse shots to show obviously the passing of time and a transition to a different scene, rather than just cutting to the school scene. I don't know. There's just something therapeutic about a time lapse shot of the the highway or whether it be a mountain range. Um, I don't know. I feel like, yeah, it's just, I feel like it's a situation of imprinting something unique on the show or a director or a writer. Um, it might be the writers writing it into the shit, but I feel like it's a way of just, you know, um, bringing an identity to the show rather than just having a simple cut to him teaching at school. All right, let's insert a scenic time-lapse shots or various time-lapse shots of different locations. I don't know why. I just like it. Like it's it. slight. I mean, you... You don't even notice the reaction is happening. For example, when rust collects on the underside of a car. Right? Hint, hint. <laughs> like an explosion? Yes, good. Explosions. Explosions are the result of chemical reactions happening almost instantaneously. And the faster reactants, i.e. explosives, and fulminate of mercury is a prime example of that. The faster they undergo change, the more violent the explosion. Is this foreshadowing to the ending of the episode with an explosion? Explosions. I feel like the topic of the day is also going to be the topic for the end of the episode or like... <laughs> You okay? Don't worry. I got kids to teach. Hey, shout out Hugo.
maybe knowing what you do when you're alone might make it easier for your family to be more accepting of whatever it is you do. I'm a full-time yeah. chemist, actually part-time. <laughs> well, I like to go on walks a couple of times a week, maybe more, after work. And I, I, I really enjoy the nature. Yes, he likes his trees. You know, the cacti, <laughs> vegetation. Oh, he's... Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh, he noticed the red marks where the chemo is being used. <sighs> what are you going to tell me? Tell you what? Cancer. You got it, right? How did you know? My aunt had one of those dots on her to target the radiation. What is it, in your lung? God, that's not cool, okay? Not at all. <clears throat> what stage are you? 3A. Contra lymph nodes. If you have any questions, I'll be right out here. <laughs> Next time, put an ice pack on your head during chemo. My aunt said it helped with the hair loss. What's it say? Property of J.P. Wynn Chemistry Lab. That's Walt School. <laughs> it's one of his kids. <laughs> They're gonna rock up to school and do a full-blown interrogation. We were I... supposed to start at three. <laughs> hey, I'm out there making fat stacks, man. Chill. I, I like that montage scene there. It was really well executed. Um, the way it was edited and put together. Um, obviously, I didn't want to include too much of it because of the music and copyright. But I felt like it's a situation where I feel like the showrunners know what they're doing. It's not a montage for the sake of montage. It was Jesse doing the rounds, but in such a unique way. Um, where there was a lot of distorted angled shots, very quick cuts um, of just, you know, generic, um, you know, where it'd be like sort of like a sign or uh, artwork on the wall and then uh, transitioned with quick cuts of close-up shots of individuals getting high off the supply as well. Um, lots of like sort of neon lighting as well. Um, it was a very well put together montage. I don't know why this show is just very well crafted. Hey, prepaid cell phone. Use it. How much is this? 26 big ones. Wow. Is that all? $26,000? Uh, no, that's 2,600. Oh. And your share is 13. Minus 25 bucks for that phone. How much meth did you sell? Nearly an ounce. Last time I checked, there were 16 ounces to a pound. What'd you do with the rest? Smoke it? Yo, I've been out there all night slinging crystal. You think it's cake moving a pound of meth one teeth at a time? So why are you selling it in such small quantities? Why don't you just sell the whole pound at once? To who? What do I look like, Scarface? This <laughs> is unacceptable. I am breaking the law here. You know what? You know what? Jesse mentioned Scarface. It's time for a change of wardrobe. Done it now, Jesse! You done it now! <laughs> Let's go, baby! Let's go! <laughs> Well, I tell you, I know a lack of motivation when I see it. <laughs> you, you, you've got to be more imaginative, you know? Just, just think outside the box here. We have to move our product in bulk, wholesale. Now, Costco style. <laughs> how do we do that? What do you mean, to like a distributor? Yes. Yes, that's what we need. We need a distributor. Now, do you know anyone like that? Yeah, I mean, I used to until you killed him. <laughs> We need to go a bit higher up the playing field. It's risky. You need an intro. You need someone to vouch. Well, who introduced you to Crazy 8? Emilio. That's only because I knew him from like third grade. And <laughs> we can't talk to Emilio either. All right, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> Look, I'm telling you, Mr. White, it's too risky. I mean, we're making money. Why can't you just be satisfied with the way oh, it is? Come on. Jesus. 
Just draw some fucking balls! I love the interactions in this show. I don't care if someone mentions there's too much characters talking. The characters talking are my favorite bits so far. Obviously, there's going to be hell-bent action and crazy-ass things happening, but I feel like the character conversations mixed in with the diegetic sound and the way the dialogue um, is executed, the way the dialogue is delivered, the way the sound design meshes with the dialogue in the background where there's little, if at all, no score during the dialogue scenes. It's just heavily reliant on the diegetic sounds emanating from the real world. It's absolutely fantastic and i love how last episode when jesse was going for a job of you know salesman role and he has a background in sales and he was pitching that and he had the balls to say that to that individual at the high level without a degree um not high level per se but you know like a decent level ish um and then now this episode you know he's a bit hesitant to go to that you know higher level and pitch his i guess um uh he pitches uh in, like pitches business basically is methamphetamine business whereas last episode you know he had a little bit of that confidence to go for the job and say he has a background in sales um to that individual at the um i can't remember what was the the firm place and this episode he's just you know he hasn't grown the balls yet something about needles and blood man oh I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> Hugo came with the gun. <laughs> Shut out, Hugo. Came prepared this time. Thank you, Hugo. Here for having a visitor? Hank. Hey, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Hank. Well, let me know if you need anything, huh? I will. Thank you, Carmen. No Damn. Chick's got an ass like an onion. She <laughs> want to cry. <laughs> wow. So what, uh, what are you doing here? You feeling okay? I can come back later. No, 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 no. Fine. Yeah, yeah, fine. Do you recognize that? Oh. Hmm. Well, that was used to cook meth. <laughs> Found out on some Indian land about 40 miles from here. Old label on the inside used to say J.P. Wynn Chemistry Lab. Really? A snitch? Yeah, one of our confidential informants. Went missing a while back. Uh, no body yet, but uh, we're pretty sure he's, you know, <laughs> Probably uh, chopped up in little pieces and fed to the buzzards. <laughs> right. Anyway, you uh, any respirators like that go missing lately? <clears throat> no, no. I'll need to take a look at that inventory. Sure, sure. I've got a list hanging on the wall. <laughs> you mind if I uh, take a look at your store? Not at all. No. You're my guest. The composer right, so left got this. keys. The science faculty, the staff, Carmen, the vice principal, have the master, and uh, me. How about students? Uh, no, no, no students have keys. Do not underestimate them. Big mistake. Are there any other respirators? Um, no. Because I'm counting six, uh, inventory says eight. <laughs> hmm. We had to get a new one. <laughs> uh, glassware looking a little sparse. <laughs> Missing a couple, uh... Erlenmeyer flask at least. Um, oh yeah. 5,000 milliliter round bottom. Methods love to brew in this baby. <laughs> I love focusing that? on Brian Cranston's uh, facial no, expressions. Just, no, I don't. <laughs> well, maybe it's Scarlett. She's in trouble or something. I mean, shit, don't ignore it on my account. Answer it. Come on, I got stuff to do. It's Jesse. <laughs> okay. So, Yo, what's up, <laughs> Mr. W? Uh, speaking. A bad time to talk? Absolutely. All right, so just listen. Hey, so you know that guy we were talking about, Tuco? Turns out my boy Skinny P was in the same cell block with him over at Los Lunas. So we got her in. <laughs> my uh, doctor is very solicitous. Hey, uh, look, buddy, the last thing I want to do is get you in hot water. Right. But some meth monkey had a feeding frenzy in here, okay? You got to keep better watch over your turf. I, I will, yeah. 
We don't want people to start wondering about you. Right? <laughs> he's joking. He's joking. <laughs> right. Absolutely not. You sure you're tight with this guy? Two nuts in a ball sack, yo. I wouldn't trust any of Jesse's contacts. <laughs> That's not a good start. That's not a good start. Sick crib, yo. You've been keeping it real since you've been sprung. What's it been, like a year? Is this your boy? Yeah, Jesse. Dude with the glass I was telling you about. <laughs> Bam! <laughs> Booyah! Wow! <laughs> this, this kicks like a mule with his balls wrapped in duct tape. What'd you get it? I cooked it. <laughs> Bullshit. Who are you working for? No one, man. I mean, I have a partner that I cook with, but that's it. <sighs> we got a deal. See, I told you Tuco would hook you up. Cool. I haven't said how much. <laughs> His reactions <gasps> to each bump. <sighs> You want me to float 35 G's? You don't trust me? You gotta do the initial... <laughs> no, no, hey, it's not, it's not that, man. It's just, you know, I don't... I don't do business that way. Tough shit, the deal is done! Fuck, dude, Tuco's good for it. I don't need your punk ass to vote for me! No, oh, uh, Jesse, you had the deal, oh, man. Oh, you gotta be very on. careful, man. Do you really want your money in front? <sighs> He's gonna kill Skinny Pete. All right, fair play, fair play. You know what? Jesse had a little bit of balls in that situation. Okay, no. Oh, getting hit with bands. Nobody moves Crystal in the South Valley with me, bitch! That's what Jesse gets for having balls. <laughs> Or being an idiot. Is that Uncle Hank? Yeah, what do you got there? All right, fuck him. And Hugo did nothing. Oh, well, thanks, Mr. Archuleta. Hugo, is that? This doesn't make any nothing. sense to me, oh, though. I, I don't understand. I got two words for you. Background check. How about that? Hugo just doesn't strike me as a thief. Yeah, well. <laughs> Another personal wall, but uh, you wouldn't know a criminal if he was close enough to check you for a hernia. <laughs> <laughs> that said, we got a search warrant and we tore old Hugo's house apart. Turns out he's a major league pothead. Oh. But uh, but he didn't major chemistry set. You hiding something? <clears throat> I'm in. And the river card. Oh. Yeah, I got nothing. I'm out. I'm out. Just like it's you and me, buddy. What's gonna happen to him? I want to commentate you. on this scene soon. Oh, he's uh, well. I mean, he's gonna lose his job, like he should. Probably spend a couple months in county because it's not his first rap. I'm waiting. <laughs> you gonna man up? Or you gonna puss out? Hank. <laughs> I'm all in. Dude, <laughs> you bad, 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 horrible liar. Show me the flop. Show me the flop. What you smoking there, huh? <laughs> huh? You got a heart? You got the flush, don't you? Nope. Not falling for it, buddy. I fold. What Talk did he... Talk about anticlimactic. Oh. Hey. could have been that bad. Come on. Oh, my God. You threw away... An ace? What are, you, what are you doing? And a cowboy? Yeah, three no, of a kind? What? Oh. A handful of nothing. <laughs> I 
you know what? I like how last episode um there was that talking scene with the family we had a family interaction scene with a talking pillow however it was really more heartfelt in terms of walt making his decision on whether to take the treatment or not um it was a very very intense sequence right there that was a very great scene um however in that scene hank talked about walt being dealt a very shitty hand and you gotta play with the cards you're dealt with right and in this episode right here, we have another family scene. However, they're playing poker. And in this scene, Walt was dealt a very shitty hand and Hank had the upper hand. But in terms of, you know, playing with the cards you're dealt with, Walt triumphed in that scenario right there. He triumphed with the cards he was dealt with. He played the game, but he played it smart. And Hank didn't call his bluff. Um, and even though he was dealt with a shitty hand, um, he dealt with it, like, he dealt with it well, he used that shitty hand to his advantage, um, you know, sort of maybe threw Hank off a little bit with the questions he was asking, um, while, you know, engaging, um, in the card game, but yeah, Hank didn't call his bluff, and, um, Walt prevailed with the shitty hand he was dealt, and maybe that's sort of a um sign of things to come and maybe the tides are changing uh for walt and even though he was dealt a shitty hand he's dealing with the hand he's been dealt with and he's playing with it and i like that tie into the last episode i love how this show follows on on what was previously dealt with and just doesn't leave it as a sort of one-off thing um it's sort of a recurring theme that's going on and how the family conversations have sort of evolved and it's evolved on an episode basis so far. It's only been one episode, but it's gradually evolving. I love it. I love it. Ah, the hair loss. So you're the cook, huh? I wouldn't be saying... No, I didn't catch your name. ...that out loud in the hospital... Tell me about this Tuco. Oh, this is how I was going. <laughs> Tell me everything about him. The cook is going to reveal himself. There's nothing pleasant in the show whatsoever. Like, I don't want to see this. But it's all part of the show, and it's like, hey, we're going to reveal the grim details about it. We're not going to hold back. I respect that. And I love how we've seen the gradual deterioration of Walter this episode. <laughs> Mr. Eggman is going to come out. <laughs> Morning. <laughs> That ain't my husband. Badass dad. <laughs> All right, Mr. Walter Wick, what do you have in store? It's you. Heisenberg. <laughs> Heisenberg. Okay. And seat Heisenberg. Oh man, 50 G's? How you figure that? 35 for the pound of meth you stole, and another 15 for my partner's pain and suffering. <laughs> Pardon. Oh, Mr. Tough Guy here. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember that little bitch. So you must be daddy. <laughs> I steal your dope. Hmm? I beat the piss out of your mule boy. And then you walk in here and you bring me more men? <laughs> Woo, that's a brilliant plan, is it? Brilliant. You got one part of that wrong. What's Walter got up his sleeve here? That, that's not meth. It's... 
is not meth. Is that the Mercury he was talking about at the beginning of the episode? Whoa! Talk about explosions and the foreshadowing. The chemical reactions. How did they survive? I'll give you that. Alright, I'll give you your money. Damn! That crystal that your partner brought me. It sold faster than ten dollar ass in TJ. Let's say you bring me another pound next week. Money up front. Right. Remember how Walter Walter was telling Jesse about having the balls? This guy just told Walter he had the balls. So when I said Sometimes that Jesse had the balls to, keep your riches. to stand up to him. It's as long as we got an understanding. It wasn't on the levels of Walter. One pound is not going to cut it. You have to take two. What is it? Hey, what is that shit? Fulminated mercury. There we go. A little tweak of chemistry. <laughs> That's so useful. That's some shit that Batman would use. <laughs> you know when he chucks the thing down and disappears? <laughs> the smoke bomb? I feel like once word gets out about the stuff Tuco's selling, there's going to be bigger dogs that come into play. <laughs> that was a ballsy play. Ford is bluff? <laughs> Ah, oh, he did it in the family car as well. See, I don't know if there's like a level of suspend your disbelief in this show that you'd have to take into account. But I'm along with the ride anyway. I am loving every episode. Um, These episodes, like I said, two episodes ago and the last episode and the episode before that or whatever. This show just keeps getting better and better each episode and... This is just a teaser as well of what's to come in terms of like their operations and who they're going to interact with and like a taste of violence. Um, I remember Walter saying no more bloodshed and no, no, I'm sorry. It's not going to work that way. It's not going to cut it. But I love the foreshadowing in this show, whether it be the previous episode teasing something um, or a theme that's going to come into play a lot. Um, throughout the show and this episode teasing the mercury situation um, with the students in class an explosion and the student mentioned an explosion and then he drawed it back or tied it back to the mercury that was on the board and the mercury came back full circle again towards the end of the episode and i love picking out that stuff i love how the show recognizes that things said earlier on are important and the audience has to be checked in throughout the entire 50 minutes because something that's teased earlier on um, might come back into play at the end and you'll be like, oh, that makes sense now. But if you're fully checked in, you're in play and you can sense the foreshadowing that's going to happen. And it gets me excited when I pick it out earlier on. I don't know why. I just love it. I love it. This show is absolutely phenomenal so far, guys. And I hope you enjoyed my reaction and my commentary on certain aspects revolving around the filmmaking, certain elements of foreshadowing, and how fantastic the script is in general. So yeah, as always, guys, it's been your boy, Moses. Take care. God bless. Peace.